Hey everyone, I'm back and today we're going to be talking about Inland Empire and this movie is directed by David Lynch and it came out in 2006 and it's currently on Max, that's how I watched it, and stars Laura Dern and I have a lot of uh, thoughts about this movie. I liked it, but there's a lot to talk about with this movie and first thing to talk about is the director, David Lynch. He's made uh, some movies that I really enjoyed. Like Eraserhead, that's my favorite movie from him. And Blue Velvet's pretty great. And Mulholland Drive I thoroughly enjoyed. And Dune is the only one that I've seen from him that I did not like. This movie is my least favorite so far out of everything that I've given a positive rating. I was thinking like, okay, for the first hour of this movie, I was really enjoying it with the slower pacing of it and... The film is very well shot uh, throughout, and the amount of sh close shots that uh, we get uh, in this movie gives off uh, like a level that's very uncomfortable. Like it, you never feel safe at any point in the movie. Like something is always uh, making you feel uneasy, and that was always communicated very well throughout the film. And this movie, I believe, is the first uh, film David Lynch made that, that was shot entirely on digital cameras. So if uh, the quality uh, doesn't look uh, up to par with uh, some of his other movies, then that's the reason why. <laughs> and there were a couple points where it did remind me of a couple other movies that I've seen, like Koyani Skatsi and uh, The Shining. Like, it did remind me of a couple movies, but for the most part, uh, I wasn't really distracted by thinking of other movies. And like I said, the first hour was uh, pretty well done, and that's my favorite part of the movie as well as some other parts sprinkled throughout uh, the film. And as the movie goes along, it gets increasingly more chaotic in terms of uh, what it's showing and what's happening story-wise. And the acting's pretty great. I thought Laura Dern did a really great job in this movie. From this movie alone, it made me think that uh, she's uh, really great and uh, can do just about anything if given the right character. There were also a lot of uncomfortable pauses in between conversations. And whenever that happened, I was like, oh, what's going to happen now? What's going to happen now? And this movie is basically almost nothing but dialogue. Despite that, it's still very engaging uh, in terms of uh, what we get from these conversations. And there's uh, plenty of scenes uh, that I really loved and uh, will want to revisit this movie for, just for specific scenes uh, from this movie. And there's uh, lots of uh, well-written side characters in this movie. They add a lot to the film. I liked how the music was uh, used in the movie. For the most part, it's kind of like wallpaper just in the background and not taking away from the scenes, but rather adding to the scenes, but not being the main focus of the scene, for the most part. Not saying it's a bad thing whenever it strays away from that, uh, because it makes sense within the context of the scene uh, as to why you would do that. And overall, the way music was used in the movie, I thought was done very well. And I really like the tone of the movie. That's also something that keeps me engaged is this nice, consistent tone that it never breaks away from. Also, never once uh, was I able to guess where the story was going. It was always unpredictable. <laughs> the whole film, as it goes along, just feels like a chaotic nightmare in a lot of ways. <laughs> There's also lots of cool visuals in this movie that uh, are going to stick with me. And this film also had like a $3 million budget and it uh, looks infinitely better than that. Like I feel as though they do a really great job with that money. And sadly it didn't even make $5 million. So unfortunately not a financial success this film, but there's a lot to, to like about it. Going into my negatives, there are parts of this movie that are confusing to me. Mostly probably because this is just one viewing and there's only so much I can get out of the film on just one viewing in terms of the story. And also, as much as I enjoyed the film, I don't really see myself rushing back to re-watching it. Despite me having a positive experience overall and me appreciating a lot about it, it's just that I feel as though the movie is too long. Like, three hours? Like, come on. <laughs> this movie it could have been shorter by, like, 40 minutes at least. I was thinking, like, two and a half hours maybe, but thinking about it, 
all the stuff that I can do with that, I was like, okay, I don't know if two and a half hours would be too much for me. Like, 220 would be all right for me. Because this film, it just felt like it dragged on at parts, and I was kind of bored and somewhat checked out. But eventually, something crazy would happen. I was like, whoa, that happened. And now I'm kind of back into this, and I want to see where else we go. I also like it that this movie doesn't really give you any clear answers as to what's going on. You just have to come up with your own interpretations as to what is being shown. And that is something you have to do, basically, if you want to watch this movie. And if you don't uh, like looking under the surface or like dig deep and you just watch this movie on a surface level, I don't think you're going to enjoy this movie at all. Not to say that you're watching the movie incorrectly if you just watch it on a surface level. I just feel as though this is the type of film that asks you to really read into everything that's going on. Like each scene of this movie, down to every line of dialogue in this movie, everything. It wants you to analyze everything and it's a great film to do that with. And there's a lot to take away from this film. But you're probably going to have to see it multiple times in order to really get a lot out of it. And I got enough out of it to where I can say I liked it. And one last thing to say about this movie is that the film did get crazier as it went along. And that was something that was keeping me entertained. Not to say that in the beginning of the movie I wasn't really all that engaged with it. The first hour, like I've said already, I really enjoyed. And once we got to the second hour, that's when things kind of started to drag for me. But but as the movie went along and things started getting crazier and crazier, that's where I started to enjoy it a lot more and kind of lean more towards loving it. I'm kind of split between loving this movie and really liking this film because I want to say I love it, but at the same time, that runtime, man, <laughs> it is asking a lot. It is a very slow, and there are parts where I was kind of bored with it. But there are a lot of parts in which I really love about it. And this is not a film for people who only enjoy mainstream films. No offense. So when I say that, because it's an art film. That's what this is by the end of the day. It's experimental. It does whatever it wants. We got the three-hour long version of what... To, director David Lynch wanted, and I'm glad that we got that film. I would much rather have uh, this over a studio interfering in him and uh, telling him what he could and could not do. And I will see this movie again one day, but just keep in mind, this is not a film for everyone. <laughs> and I don't even know if I would introduce uh, people uh, to David Lynch with this movie. I think it's you're better off watching either Eraserhead, Blue Velvet, or Mulholland Drive. Because this one is just David Lynch going all out, basically, in a way. And also, this is three hours long, like I've said already. And I don't know if it, you should introduce people to a three-hour long David Lynch film. I think something shorter than three hours is preferable. So I would recommend this movie if you're already a fan of David Lynch. If you've never seen a David Lynch film before, I would not recommend starting with this one. So watch something else, uh, like any other of those David Lynch films that I just listed, because I feel as though you'll have a much more positive experience watching those uh, than this. So check this movie out uh, whenever you get the chance, if you're... A fan of David Lynch for sure. And with all that being said, I'm going to give Inland Empire a 7 out of 10. Thank you for watching my videos as always. If you enjoyed this review, be sure to leave a like and comment down below you thought of Inland Empire and my social media links. They will all be in the description, so follow me there. And last but not least, subscribe to be a part of Fully Nation and I'll see you when I get my next review up. And that is going to be for Bringing Out the Dead. So look forward to that, but until I get that up, Thank you for watching and have a great day.